So in our continuing effort to calculate uh, work performed by various forces, let's consider the spring now. So let's say we have this block that's sliding along, no friction whatsoever in this problem. When it reaches point A, it comes in contact with the spring, and since it's moving to the right, it starts uh, compressing the spring in. At point B, we reach some compression, I call it delta B, and then the block comes to a stop at point C, where it reaches its maximum compression, call it that delta C and then uh, the spring starts to recoil it pushes the block back out so sometime later the block reaches point b again i call that b2 and then it'll reach point a again and then the block will will head back to the left in this exercise what i want to do is i want to calculate the work in going from point a to point b sounds simple enough right so once again using the definition of work we get an integral of total force you can say some of the forces dot dr, and it's a definite integral from A to B. Seeing that we have a bunch of forces in this expression, might as well write a free body diagram, right? So forces, I've got weight acting down, so minus mgj hat, I guess. Uh, we've got a normal force pushing up, and we have a spring force acting on this thing, right? So I and j are the usual horizontal and vertical. And that spring force, which way is it pushing or pulling? Uh, the spring is compressed, so normally the spring likes to be at this natural length right here, but we're compressing it, so the spring is pushing backward so to the left. So there's force of the spring in the minus i-hat direction. And here it's important to remember how these springs work, so let me draw a couple of axes here. On the horizontal axis I'll put delta, this is the amount the spring is compressed, and fs would be that, that compression force uh, from the spring. And if it's a standard linear spring, uh, the relationship is like this, right? The, the more the, the compression in the spring, the higher the spring force. Again, if it's a standard linear model, we say that force varies linearly with the uh, compression. Or I can say the spring force, Fs, is equal to K times the displacement. Now, as the block is moving from point A to point B, I'm going to make an observation. This d the dr is just simply all in the i-hat direction. dr is right there. I can call it dr, or I can call it ds in the i-hat direction, if you like. And therefore, the normal force, no work, right? Because normal force is perpendicular to the i-hat I direction. Similarly, the weight, no work. The only force that does the work is the spring force. And notice that the spring force is, goes in the opposite direction of dr, right? The spring force is in the minus i-hat direction. The spring is compressed, so it's, so it's pushing back in the leftward direction. dr is in the right-hand direction. So therefore, my f dot dr that's inside this integra integral here, it must be negative. And the work in going from a to b must be negative. All right, so I think we're ready to integrate. In this integral, I'm going to let... Um, s denote the amount the block has traveled from point A. So we have an integral and the force is going to be k times s, right? In the minus i direction and I'm taking a dot product of something in the positive i hat direction. So I get minus ks ds. And now that it's clear that s is my integration variable, I'm going to integral from point A, which is where s equals zero, up until point b, where s is a delta b. And of course, this integral is minus 1 half ks squared. Evaluate the limits at s equals 0 and s equals delta b. A little bit more, so this becomes a minus 1 half k delta b squared minus 0. Or I can just leave the 1 half k delta b squared. So there's my work. Pretty simple, right? Now, although I've already answered my question right here, I'd like to think about this a little more deeply. So let me scroll up so we can have some space to work. So in our work calculation, this is the thing we're integrating right here, k times s, or I should say minus k times s. What does that look like? That's just some straight uh, function like this, where the, horizontal, where the horizontal coordinate is s here. So we're integrating minus ks, we're integrating this thing from s equals 0 all the way up through s equals, I'll call it delta b. And the integral of this function is, we can think of it as the area under the curve right here, all the way up through that point. Now let's suppose I want to find, just for the heck of it, what if I want to find the work in going from b to c? What are b and c again? So b is was was this point right here. C is just even further, right? C is when the, when the spring is at its maximum compression. 
Well, if this is point C, let's say this is delta C right there, then the work in going from B to C, I guess you just apply the definition, we're just, it's the same spring force, KS, still negative work, still DS. Now we're going from delta B to delta C, right? There's delta C. And now this work is not the area under that part of the curve. Instead, it's the area um, from here to here under the curve, right there. So that, that one's work from B to C. Interesting. And of course, I can uh, write down this integral. I'm going to get the exact same thing. Integrate, get minus 1 half k delta squared. I'm going to get the boundary conditions, this time from delta B and delta C. So I can write this as minus 1 half k, and it's going to be delta C squared minus delta B squared like so. Again, all I did was this exact same calculation. I just applied the boundary conditions. So I feel like I want to keep playing with this. Let's do it. So we, let's take the work as the block goes from C back to B again. I call this B2 when it reaches point B a second, the second time. So again, we were at C at, at maximum compression. And then the, now the spring's pushing back. And when it reaches B2 again, I want to go from here to there. What is the work? Well, Here's how I'm going to write it. I'm going to do an integral. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to write it exactly the same as I have it up here. K times S dS. And I'm going this time from delta C back to delta B. Delta C and delta B are just the amount of, of compression in the, in the spring, right? So it's at delta C when we're at point C and we're at delta B when we're at either B t point B2 or B. B the, B the first time or B the second time. Yeah, and you might wonder, well, why is it the same thing? Isn't now that I'm going back, isn't don't I have a positive work now? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Remember this throughout this entire thing, this the spring is compressed. So the spring is pushing back towards the left on this thing, right? And over here on the first two legs from A to B and from B to C, the work was negative because uh, the block was moving to the right and the force was to the left. Now from B to C, the force is still to the left, but now my dr is the opposite way. So I'm expecting a positive a positive work out, out of this. So why do I have a minus ks? Well, look at my, my ds, essentially. I'm going from delta C to delta B. So the ds, each little increment in an s, is actually negative. So ds is now negative. So the, the force in my dot product, I guess, where to go? My force and my dot product is still right here. The force is still in the minus i direction, but now dr is also in the minus i direction because the s's are getting smaller now. So this formalism is still alive, and I can just write just like I did before. The, the result is going to be 1 half k times, in this case, I start off at, excuse me, my end point is delta b delta B squared minus delta C squared. And there's my work from C to B2. And if you want to check that this is indeed positive work, it's not hard to verify. Look, at delta B is smaller than delta C, right? Delta B is smaller than delta C, so delta B squared is smaller than delta C squared. So this difference right here must be negative, and I got a negative there, so negative times negative, positive, positive work. So if I were to express this work this work right here graphically, what would it, what would it look like? Well, I can draw a little line, um, k times s, same slope as this one, but this one positive. Then this work would be a positive work, right? It'd, it'd be the the area under this part of the curve, right there. Aha! Uh -huh. So now what I want to do is one more little step here. I think one more little step. What if I consider the work in going from point A all the way to point B, continue on to point C, and then continue on to point B2? I, I call, I'm going to call this the work in going from A to B2, but I do it from along this path, A, B, C, B2. Again, if you want to see the picture up here, start at A, compress the spring, compress it at its maximum, and let it recoil. So I want to get from point A to point B2. Well, using the usual properties of integrals, this is just the work in going from A to B, plus the work in going from B to C, plus the work in going from C back to B2. So what is that? 
the work in going from A to B was this part right there. And then the work from B to C was this part right here. And the work from C back to B2 was this part right here. And notice that we have a piece, this piece was negative, this piece was negative, this piece was positive. But notice that these two pieces exactly cancel each other out. So I got a positive area here and a positive area here and a negative area there. They exactly cancel each other out. In fact, you can see it right here. If you take these two terms, you see that they're exactly the same size, just different sign. So therefore, the work in going from A to B to C back to B2 is the same as just the work in going from A to B. I didn't have to go all the way to, to C and then back again to get the same amount of work. Interesting. So this is demonstrating that property that we saw with gravity. In other words, the work done by the, remember the work done by gravity is path independent. It doesn't matter how you get from one point to another point. The work in going from, from that in initial point to the final point is independent of the path. It only depends upon the endpoints. It's the same story with the spring. It doesn't matter how you got from, from point A to point B, whether you got there directly, whether you got there through C and then back again, or maybe even bounced back and forth a few times. The only thing that matters in calculating the work is the end point. So therefore, when calculating the work done by, done by a spring, one can come up with sort of a general expression that works in all circumstances. And we can see it right here in this expression right there. We're going from some, some d displacement to another displacement. So the work in going from, I'll just say, some point P to another point Q, just to put two more uh, states in there, or at least states with different names in there, is going to equal minus 1 half K delta Q squared minus delta P squared. And of course, you can write this if you don't want the minus sign. You can write this as like so. So here's our expression for work done by a spring. It only depends on the endpoints and nothing else. It's one of these wonderful forces that we can, for which we can calculate the work.